in this video, we're going to talk about how to collect objects. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm logged in. Let's scroll up a little bit so our whole rectangle is on the screen. I'm going to load up lesson 10. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to lesson 11. Collecting objects. I'm going to save that. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is run this and remind myself what lesson 10 was. So I have my movement, I have projectiles, and I have a bunch of fruit on my screen. So what I want to do is just draw one fruit so that I can focus on just getting the collecting working. And then after I have a working collection, then I will add more fruits in and deal with multiple fruits. So the function where we set how many fruits we have is the initialize function. Instead of 100 fruits, I'm just going to do one fruit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run that. So the fruit's over here. I'm going to run it again. The fruit's over here. I'm going to run it again. The fruit's way up here. For testing purposes, it's going to be easier if I can just set the fruit to be near where Blobby is so I can just quickly see if it's working instead of having to chase all around the screen to find the fruit. So what I'm going to do, instead of allowing the fruit to be randomly set, I'm going to go into the set fruits function where I decided to use that random location and I'm going to comment that out, just the dash dash, and that'll be easy to come back later and just remove the dash dash and this other part that I'm putting in and set it back to how it was. So I'm going to go ahead and just, instead of allowing it to, here, let's, there we go. So instead of allowing it to choose a random XY location using the random location function, I'm just going to put in some numbers. And with playing around with this, I think, 200 comma 100 um, works pretty well. So I changed my LOC location to 200 comma 100. Let's see where that's at. So there's my fruit. So right now, nothing happens when I run through the fruit because I haven't told the code to do anything. So now I'm ready to write my collision function. So I'm going to go to the last function that I wrote, which maybe is draw fruits. Yep. So I'm going to write function collision. And I'm going to set up some comments again, just to show the different parts of this code. And then I'll come back and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So the main parts of this function are going to be checking if the player has collided with an object from the left or right, check if the player has collided with an object from the top or bottom, and then checking for a collision, which will be if both the horizontal and the vertical parts of this check have indicated a collision. All right, so I need to add some inputs to this header. Player X, player Y, object X and object Y. And leaving these generic like this allows me to have different objects as input. So maybe it's a fruit today and maybe it's an enemy tomorrow. The first thing I wanna do is create a couple variables to keep track of um, whether there's been a hit in the horizontal or vertical direction. So I'm gonna call those hit X and hit Y. And I'm going to set both of them equal to false. So there hasn't been any hit yet. That's what that means. Now let's check if the player has hit an object horizontally. So I'm going to do an if statement. And the if statement will have two parts. So if we've hit the left hand side or if we've hit the right hand side. And the these statements, these conditional statements are long enough that I think it's going to be better to leave it on the next line. Okay, so we have if something or something, then we'll have something else happen. To check whether the player's left side has entered the object, 
I am going to take the player's x value, which is its left-hand side, and see if it's greater than the object's x value, and if that player x value is less than the object's x value plus 8, because that is the width of the object, so that it's basically saying, is the player x value between the left and right hand sides of the object. Then we're going to do a similar thing for the right hand side of the player, except the right hand side of the player is px plus 8, and we want to see if that value is greater than the left hand side of the object, and px plus 8 is less than the right hand side of the object, so ox plus 8. Okay, so if one of these is true, then we want to say that there's a hit. So I'm going to say hit x equals true. And then we can end our if, because if we don't have one of these being true, then we want to just leave the hit x as false because there wasn't a hit. We're going to do something super similar in the vertical direction. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it. And then all I'm going to do is change every single x to a y. All we're doing is changing the direction of the collision, but the principle remains the same. We're saying as the top value of the sprite between the top and bottom values of the object and is the bottom value of the sprite between the top and bottom values of the object. And then we want to say if either of those are true then hit y is true. So we've had a hit in the y direction. If we've checked this and it's true for x but not true for y or vice versa then there's not a collision. That just means as line, the player would be lined up with the object vertically or horizontally. But if they are both true, so if hit x and hit y, so we could say here if hit x equals true and hit y equals true, and that's fine, um, but this is a shortcut way of saying that. Then we want to do something with this collision. What I'm going to do is have this function return true if there was a hit, and otherwise, or else, return false. And that return value lets me know what's happening in this collision function. So let's scroll down. And we're going to make another function. We're going to actually use the collision function to see if we're colliding with another object. This function will be called collect fruit. No inputs on this one. And we'll end our collect fruits function. Collect fruit. So what I'm going to do is save the value of that collision function to a variable named hit. Um, I'm going to put in some x and y values here. So we have blobby dot x, that'll be the first x coordinate, and then blobby dot y. So we have xy for one sprite and then xy of another sprite. So we want to see if it's hitting a fruit. And in order to see if it's hitting a fruit, we need to actually grab the fruit um, from a table, from our fruit table. So I'm going to rename it because we're going to use this a lot in this function and it's going to be easier just to do f instead of and then bracket, and then a number, and then a bracket. So this is how we can look at one particular fruit 
in our fruits table. We only have one fruit in there right now and it's in the number one slot. So now that it's saved as f, I can come over here and do f.x and f.y. So you'll recall that when we set up our fruits in the set fruits function, we had this table and we have an x and a y. We also have an active and we're going to use that in a little bit. All right, uh, collect fruit. So then instead of right away trying to like do more complicated stuff, I'm just going to print my value of hit. So it's going to print either true or false. Um, and just see if we're touching the fruit. And then if that's working, then we'll come back and actually try to collect the fruit. Before I actually run this, I want to call the collect fruit function in tick. So up in tick. Um, I'm going to do it somewhere around throw slime. Could be before or after. Looks like I already have a space here. So I'll do collect fruit. Let's go ahead and run. There we go. So it's false right now. And then when I come over here and touch this banana, it's true. And then as soon as I'm not touching it, it's false. So now let's take this print statement out. And let's actually put in something that will collect the fruit. So if there was a hit, then what I want to do is set the fruit's active value, so fruit.active, to be false so it's no longer active. Unfortunately, this is not going to work because what I realized was in the draw fruits function, I never said that the fruit had to be active in order to be drawn. We we're just drawing all the fruits all the time, no matter what. So now that we're trying to collect it, we need to only draw a fruit if it's active. So we're going to look at each fruit. So I'm going to take this for loop and inside the for loop, I'm going to refactor this a little bit um, because it's going to be confusing to use f for a number here. So this is a number, not the actual fruit. And down below, I used f as the actual fruit. So I'm going to go ahead and call this num because I think that makes a little bit more sense. And then I'm going to save the fruit as f. So now, each time the loop goes through, I'm going to grab the next fruit from the table based on what num is, which represents the slot that that fruit is in. And then here, I can just use f on each one of these. All right. So I'm grabbing the fruit first. And then I'm going to say, if that fruit is active, and remember, active stores a true or a false value. So this whole thing will be either true or false. Then I want to do all of this stuff that actually draws the sprite. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and tab it over a little bit. And then in my if. Now, if we run it, hopefully, we'll be able to collect it. There, yay! All right, and then run it again. Let's see if we get something different. All right, let's see if I can jump on top of this one. Okay. There we go. Nice. Okay. So, now, let's see if we can get more than one fruit drawing on the screen. So, in initialize, let's set our fruit number to something like five or whatever you want it to be. And then in set fruits, I want to change my location of each fruit to not be all the same. Like if I drew it right now, 
I have all the fruits piled up on top of each other. So there's two problems. Number one, we need to make them in different locations. And number two, watch carefully. You might have just seen one of the, um, one little pixel disappear. Um, we are only collecting the first fruit in the table. That's because in our collect fruit function, we are only looking at the fruit in the first slot. So if we want to collect fruits, we're going to want to use a loop to do this. But first, before I forget, let's change the set fruits to not draw all in the same location. So we'll take out that little table that we were using. And then let's go back to collect fruit and let's make our for loop. So like we did before, we're gonna do for num equals one to the end of the table, which is hashtag fruits. And again, you can prove to yourself that's a hashtag by expanding the font. So we're gonna do all of this stuff for each fruit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pad that over. And now that I am I have a loop right here for this number one, I want to do num instead. Um, and then I'm gonna end, this is the end of my if. Okay, let's try it out. All right, of course, all the fruits are way over there. Let's see if we can collect them. All right, that's one down. Hey, oh, I forgot I could do that. Cross across the screen. There we go. All right, we got them all. Looks like everything's working. Next time, we're going to talk about. Um, counting the fruits and a heads up display that will allow us to print stuff to the screen. Some things that you might want to have up there are what level you're on, your lives or health, um, your score, any um, special objects that you've collected maybe. Um, so that'll depend on your game. But I'll give you kind of the basics of counting things and having that in the heads-up display. All right, uh, we will see you next time.